I apologize for yesterday. I arrived uninvited. No, I'm grateful. Thanks to you, Mizuki has her voice back. No, I didn't do anything. Date, a riddle. A man-eating alligator lives in a river. There are no bridges or boats. How do you cross? Well, let's see. You jump across? Wrong. The solution is simple. You just swim across. But what about the man-eating alligator? He's at a convention out of town. He isn't in the river. <sighs> I've been wondering about that picture. Iris drew it when she was 12. That's you on the left and Iris in the middle, correct? Yes. And who's on the right? The man I was dating at the time. It was only for three months, but... I met him about six years ago. Have you been to the Ikume Shrine in the Minato district? I was praying there one day and I heard a voice. Well, more like a groan. Behind the shrine, I saw a man sitting on the ground. He was bleeding badly from his stomach. I took out my phone to call an ambulance, but he grabbed my wrist and he held me. And then he kissed me. I was shocked, but when I stared into his eyes, then I heard footsteps and then a bunch of men yelling. They were looking for him. When the voices and footsteps faded, he let me go. Don't call an ambulance and don't call the cops. I knew he had to be a criminal. So I took him to an underground clinic I knew. You took him to a mob doctor? Renju's friend. I only met him once. Even though we had our first kiss seconds after meeting each other, it took a long time before I got to see him again. The first time we held hands was when we watched a horror movie together. The first time I took his arm was when we went to a haunted house in an amusement park. <laughs> but I wasn't the one who grabbed him. A zombie jumped out and scared us. And he clung onto my arm. He had that cute side to him. And I was falling in love. Our second kiss was in the car. It's cliche, I know. But we drove around at night, looking at all the lights. We parked our car near a warehouse and kissed. I don't think we ever said I love you. But we both knew. We were getting closer and closer. I introduced him to Iris about a month after I first met him. Iris never had a father figure in her life before. She warmed up to him immediately and treated him like a real dad. From then on, it was always the three of us together. We would go to the beach, to the river, the zoo, the amusement park. Going to barbecues with another person was a new experience for me and Iris. Everything felt so fresh. Every day was so exciting. Oh, sorry. You asked about the picture. He wanted to make Okonomiyaki one day. He was working with the hot plate. It was ridiculous. He was trying to flip one, and it flew up in the air and landed right on my head. Iris saw the whole thing and laughed and laughed. I hadn't seen her laugh like that in a long time. I was having so much fun that I put an Okonomiyaki on their heads, too. Plop, plop. I added the bonito flakes and mayo and sauce. At this point, there was no going back. Eggs flew, flour going everywhere. The room was not a pretty sight. After our battle, we laughed like crazy. We were rolling around on the floor. So Iris decided to draw it. It's nostalgic. But those days didn't last. Six years ago, in November, a man with a gun broke into our house. Fortunately, Iris wasn't home at the time. But my boyfriend was. And that's why the gunman came. He wanted to kill him. He wanted to kill him and he would never stop. He pulled the trigger. I tried to protect him. The bullet hit me, 
but the police arrived. They were both arrested and incarcerated. Why was he after your boyfriend? Before he met me, he committed some terrible crime. I don't know the details, but it was awful. So he became a target for underworld criminals. I don't know exactly why, but I know that he betrayed them in some way. May I ask you something? Of course. I had heard that that incident was a random break-in gone wrong. Oh. That's not true. I lied about it at the time, because of Mizuki. Mizuki is Iris's friend. If she found out, Iris would find out too. I didn't want Iris to know. Know what? That I was dating a criminal. He was her father figure. Iris looked up to him. If she found out about his past... <laughs> Today's a holiday. I suppose there's never a day off for a detective. Oh, but you aren't a detective, right? Technically, yes. But I still deal with crime. I see. Today is a holiday. You forgot too, didn't you? Did something happen to him? You asked me that yesterday. Right from the hospital? I'm sorry. I have no idea. I've put Iris through so much. I was 19 and single when she was born. People didn't take kindly to that. But Iris was such a fighter. She always protected me. I remember, one time at the nursery, some of the other mothers were talking about me. Iris ran up to them and said, Don't talk about my mommy! <laughs> I'm supposed to be the mother, but it's Iris who's always protecting me. They died when I was 17. I was an orphan, and my relatives lived far away. They might have taken me in, but I was already in my second to last year of high school. It wasn't a good idea for me to move that late. So I decided to stay here, by myself. And take care of Iris. Yes, all alone. But Renju would help sometimes. It was always just me and her. Vacations, barbecues, zoos, amusement parks. Just me and her. Oh, that reminds me. When Iris was five, there was a children's theater show in Bloom Park. It was called Milky Moon. It was about girls as magical space rangers and such. She loved singing and dancing. Even as a kid, whenever she heard music, her body would start moving. It was a quirk of hers. And she did it at the show, too. Toward the end, when all the Milky Moon girls were dancing to the ending song, Iris climbed up onto the stage and danced with them. I tried to stop her, of course. I grabbed her arm and tried to get her to sit, but before I knew it, she was up there, dancing. And everyone was so excited. Even I was dancing by the end of it. When it was over, she had the biggest smile on her face. Mama, you're a good dancer. That's the kind of girl she was. Whenever she sees someone playing music on the street, she'll run up and join them, right then and there. Music at the train station, the crosswalk beeping, even at convenience stores. When their little chime played, she would start dancing. 
It almost got her into trouble once. She was on the jungle gym and a truck drove by. It was playing loud music out the windows. She climbed up to the top and started dancing, but she lost her balance and fell. She fractured her leg pretty badly. It was on a Sunday, and it was hard to find an open emergency care. I was carrying her on my back, running and running through town. I could still hear her crying. Will I still be able to dance, Mommy? Can I still dance? She cried and cried into my shoulder. It was the only time she ever cried so much. Uh, no, um, that's not true. There was one other time. Six years ago, I was the victim of a shooting. After the surgery, Iris came in running. And she was sobbing. swore to myself then that I would protect her no matter what. Iris is everything to me, more important than my own life. Date, we can't spend time reminiscing. We have to get moving. Yeah, let's go. A forklift. It doesn't seem like it's in use. It was likely just left here. You first arrived here yesterday at 9 p.m. At that time, lying on this workbench was... Iris's dead body, covered with a white cloth. But the second time... The corpse was gone. It was 11.25 p.m., but the body could not have simply vanished. Crime scene investigation was here before 11.25 p.m. When did they arrive? According to the report, 10.30 p.m after we finished sinking with so. It took them an hour and a half to get here? Correct. Why did it take them so long? Unknown. The report does not specify. Perhaps a result of outside influence. Outside influence? In any case, there is nothing of note about the bench. Examining it will not reveal any further information. A switchboard. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. A forklift. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. There are numerous cardboard boxes on the shelves. There is nothing abnormal about them. Hi, I'm Dramaimon. Iba, the jokes, you've got to stop. The crane on the ceiling. Nothing has changed. It's a wooden box. There is nothing inside. There are only a few items on the shelf. It is likely that this warehouse isn't in regular use. Nothing. But finding nothing may, in fact, be something. What do you mean? I was just thinking out loud. Let's get going. Date, your temperature is dropping. At this rate, they might find your body in here. right now. 
Who says that? Why are you angry? You backed out on your Shovel Forge promise. I didn't make any promises. You promised me a date, though. I did go to your house. Two minutes before midnight, and you didn't even take me anywhere. Yeah, because we only had two minutes. We could have gone somewhere. Iturup, Kunashir, Shikotan, Habomai? Absolutely not. Then you should have come earlier. Well, uh... I know you were mad about our date, but why was your phone off? I couldn't get a hold of you. Iris, I promise you won't laugh, but I saw something at the cold storage warehouse last night. What? Your dead body. <laughs> I told you not to laugh. But come on, Date. I'm alive. I'm right here. Look, I can jump around. Woohoo! Stop, I'm serious. In my dream, I saved you from being killed. And here you are, which is why I was like that when I went to your house yesterday. Sorry, there's no point in telling you all this. No, it's fine. Sorry for laughing. I just didn't know what was up with you. Huh? I believe you, Date. Maybe you were in a parallel world or something. Another bizarre explanation. Last night around 2 a.m., someone visited you. Who was it? And you left the house as well. Where did you go? You really want to know? Yes. And you'd do anything for the answer? Yes. All right then, Shovel Forge. No. Then go on a date with me. Again, no. But you owe me for yesterday. I told you I couldn't get a hold of you. Objection. Even if you did get a hold of me, you didn't want to see me anyway, right? Until you fulfill your promise, I won't tell you anything. <sighs> Off? Yeah, from school. Oh, yeah, it's a holiday. So I decided to come to Lemnusgate. We're going to do a recording for a show soon. What about him? traffic accident. I'm worried. Any idea where he could have gone? I'm sorry, no. I've seen him on TV. Ever met him? No. Not at all? No, not at all. So, what are we doing? What do you mean? For our date, of course. Fine. Hey, wait a minute! Yay! So you'll play Shovel Forge with me? I will not. So we'll go on a date then? Ah, <sighs> yes. Deal! And you have to honor our agreement this time. I can't believe it. Oh, but we can't go right away. I have a recording coming up. I should be done by three, though. Tessa, we're starting soon. So, Date, meet me back here at 3? If you ditch me, I will be beyond furious. Anyway, bye for now. Peace! There is no point remaining here. Let's get moving. You need more info on Ren? I'm sorry to waste your time, but I don't have anything for you. I see. Well... 
I could use a little help down there, if you know what I mean. I do not know what she means. Perhaps you should take her up on her offer. Absolutely not. I find it calming. Why is that? Don't ask me. You know about Renju and the Kumakura gang, right? Yeah, I know. I heard it from his own mouth right here. Do they have anything to do with the talent scandal at Lemniscate? Maybe now they do, since Renju is the president of Lemniscate. But even before that, Renju and the Kumakuras go way back. All the way back to high school. Hey, Date. Have you ever seen a dead body? You're a policeman. I don't know what department, but I assume you aren't handing out traffic tickets. So, how about it? What about you? Me? Well, yeah. Not just one. Countless bodies. When I was in high school, I had a pretty crazy job. You know the Kumakura gang? I was hooked up to one of their phone fraud scams. I just had to go collect the money from drop points and give it to the Kumakuras. It was an easy job. Eventually, I became friends with the higher-ups. They started taking me with them on jobs. What jobs? The target was always an elderly person from the country with no family. Elderly folk who owned a lot of land, you know? They live every day in loneliness and desperation. You just have to be nice to them. That's all it takes. Guys would get to know the old people and they would set up an adoption process. After that, you just have to get them really drunk. Throw them in the tub full of hot water. And they pass. Just like that. Heart attack, brain hemorrhage, or they simply... The police almost never investigated. It always looked natural, like they died of old age. So the adopted gang members would inherit the land. Then we sell it and make massive profits. I watched a lot of people get killed like that. And I've seen journalists get killed for getting too close to the truth. So I... I... <laughs> Why am I telling you all this? Are you going to arrest me? You didn't do it yourself, right? No, I was always the lookout. But still... Date, I... Old mama. Hey, I'm over here. Hey, mama. What's with the pizza, fish, and chips? People used to call me that on the internet all the time. Guess it's stuck. Pizza, fish, and chips. Ah, oh, I see. Piece of fucking shit. This, however, appears to be a simple Italian pizza with fish and french fries. Care to watch some riveting videos with balls and holes? Sorry, I don't like golf. I don't have anything else for you. Sorry, I'm not much help. No, don't worry about it. 
Can you come back again tonight? There's a regular here who is good friends with Ren. They should be here tonight. If you ask him, he might have some information for you. Tonight? Yes. I'll be waiting for you. Sojima is a key person of interest in this case. Earlier, the boss cited three points of suspicion against him, and I agree with her assessment. I checked the call logs of So's phones. Congressman Sajima has one phone under his name, and a burner phone rented under a fake name. Did you find anything interesting? Unfortunately, no. Really? But I do have something. I looked into So's secretary's phone. One call in particular stood out to me. Huh? It was one week ago, from Fuchu Prison. The caller identified themselves as inmate number 89. Number 89? Yes. This is most likely the same person who called HQ. I know who killed Shogun Adami. When you crash, the first thing you hit is the dash. Interesting. Date, this reminds me of Egyptian mythology. Hathor, the mother of Ra. The mirror was one of- Wasn't she a cow or something? box is where you keep your doves. It's not a dove box. From what I can determine, he is an assassin. He accepts jobs from the criminal underworld for substantial rewards. His code name is Falco. Falco? Correct. Unknown. You would have to ask Mr. Sejima for that information. Number 89 said he knew who killed Shogo. He did, but that may be a lie. Does he have any connections to the Cyclops serial killings? Unknown. In all honesty, I have no idea. Unknown. You don't know? He is not registered in any databases. He could be a foreigner or recent immigrant, but it would be impossible to determine from where. However, I did not detect any accent in his speech. I believe we can conclude that he grew up in Japan. Murder. He is serving a life sentence for multiple counts. He was imprisoned six years ago. Six years ago? Number 89. Should we visit Fuchu Prison? No, we don't have time. Call up boss. Tell her to request that number 89 be brought to Abyss. Roger. I heard there was no body found at the cold storage warehouse. Isn't your investigation over? Speaking of gardens, what kind do you prefer? I like a well-manicured lawn, but some bushes aren't bad either. I mean, what?
Iba, look! A merman! So is a wealthy politician. It is no surprise to me that he has a merman. Wait, a merman? Oh, hey everybody! I'm a merman. I told you, I will not answer that question. And why not? We didn't find anything there. There's nothing to hide. It appears that he will not respond. Number 89? Who is that? An inmate at Fuchu Prison. He used to go by Falco. He was an assassin. Odd, finding such a person in Japan. What about him? About a week ago, he called your secretary. I don't know anything about that. He was probably calling for a pardon or some such nonsense. My secretary probably decided it wasn't worth my attention. If you need information, you can ask her. I can't help you. You are beginning to irritate me. What did you want to talk to her about? What is the private matter you mentioned? What is your relationship with her? I'll answer your questions when you present a warrant. <sighs> How many times do I have to tell you? I don't know that girl. I've never seen her before. Date. I knew he was lying. This proves it. I am having difficulty determining his motive for lying. After all, Iris was not killed. Maybe he's got a secret with her he doesn't want us knowing. What are you hiding so? Haven't you people got enough? I'm very busy, excuse me. Oh, actually, I do have one more thing to tell you. To be honest, Kaname Date, I don't like you. I don't ever want to see you again. So I suggest that you don't show your face here anymore. It's what's best for both of us, understand? Who does this guy think he is? Date, your blood pressure is skyrocketing. Any higher could kill you. <sighs> Relax, Date. We still have much to do. I know, I know. I took care of what you asked for. Number 89? He's here. In the interrogation room. I'm on it. You'll go without me this time. I have some errands to run. One of the higher-ups needs me. I'll have Pewter go to the interrogation with you. Understood. Let's get started. Djibouti. Northeast Africa, a small republic of roughly 900,000. I don't take kindly to stupid lies. Number 89. Your real name. I don't know, I forgot. Oh, you know about that. It's true. I called Sejima's secretary. I got him on the line and I told him something very important. You spoke with him directly? Yeah. I don't know. It's not like I'm counting. I told him to call somebody. Somebody? I can't tell you anymore. Let's get back to the topic at hand. Two days ago, you called our investigation office. You said you know who killed Shoko Nadami. That's right. Who? Hey, don't be so hasty. We haven't agreed on a deal. You're gonna let me out of prison, right? Yes, I promise. <laughs> You're lying. 
You don't want to release me. That's fine. I was expecting this anyway. I just wanted a good excuse to leave the prison. What do you mean? You really want to know? Here's what I mean! You'll make a good hostage for me. Take me to the exit. Now. Oh, darn. Are you kidding me? A criminal serving a life sentence just escaped from Metro Police. I ordered everyone to keep quiet about this, but it's only a matter of time before the press sniffs this out. We need to get number 89 back before then. Wait a minute, did you let number 89 escape on purpose? So that you could catch the bigger fish? Yeah, boss. Exactly. I was kidding. Spiking is an important part of volleyball. Hmm. What is that? That's nostalgic. When I was a kid, I used to put a broom between my legs and pretend to be a witch. A shogi player gave that to me. I think his name was... Hanyo? The Hanyu? Yep, that's him. were kind and had a big smile. Such a shame. Boss, I turned your stationary bike into a coffee grinder. You use the pedals to grind the beans. Why the hell did you do that? Date, look! A UFO! That's a symbol. I want to knock you over the head with that snowboard right about now. Then allow me to say this. I will slalom away from that attack. Not funny. Date, pewter. Once we're done here, let's pop that bottle. Not a bad idea. But when the boss gets drunk, she has the tendency to crush balls. In that case, perhaps we should never solve this case. I really like chairs. They look delicious. What the hell are you talking about? How would I know? After he got to the exit, he let me go. I didn't see where he went. I collapsed right there. Punched out an officer and stole his clothes. He put on the uniform and brought me with him at gunpoint. Well, he had the gun in his pocket, uh, hiding it. No one on the floor even knew this was happening. He got on the elevator and made it to the ground floor. He even stole my security card. 
He said he'd kill me if I tried anything. I suppose the whole escape took him about uh, five minutes. He must have planned this. You're rather calm about all this. I'm coming down from being terrified for my life. I'm in a bit of a fugue state right now. Number 89 still has it. But don't worry, I have a spare. I'll give it to you later. Boss, it's my fault he got away. I'm sorry. Don't waste time apologizing. Go catch him. I'm the one who has to go on an apology tour now. <sighs> we really messed up this time. Dante, I know you are already aware of this, but there are security cameras all over this compound. I checked all of them. Number 89 fled in a car that was waiting for him. So he had an accomplice? Yes. Did you see who was driving? I did. Who was it? You and I know him well. Rancho? Renju? Why? Date, Moma is calling. Moma? From the Kumakuras? I'll connect him. Hey, Date. I just got the word. Renju's been seen. What? Where? Hey, don't forget our deal. Deal? What deal? You forgot already? I'm talking about Tessa. Oh, right. I'll be waiting. You know what to do. What should we do? We have no choice. We have to take her. To MoMA? Yes. Oh my gosh! Late, 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 late. You're late. I'm going home. Never! Have you forgotten the vows you exchanged? Are you drunk? No, of course not. You're drunk. I kid, 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 kid. I'm kidding! I can't believe I'm gonna shovel forge with you. I'm getting excited! We are not shovel forging. I was talking about the date, silly. Shovel Forge and a date are synonymous, apparently. So where are we going? To meet the dragon. The dragon? Like that dragon? Yeah. Oh, I get it. Like a fantasy world with swords and magic. And you're gonna teleport me there. I'm getting fired up! Ooh, look at the dragon! So cool! So... This is a crime syndicate building, right? Yeah. Kumakuras. And you were trying to make me believe this was some kind of fantasy world? No, that's what you thought. Wow, Dante lied to me! Dante, you bastard! You made Tessa cry! M Mister, save me! Throw this man into Tokyo Bay! Got it! I'll have him sleeping with the fishes. This is an interesting turn of events. I can hardly believe it. Mama, I held up my end of the deal. You sure did! You want to hear about Renju? Mr. Okiura? Sorry for bringing you here. I it's okay. You don't have to be scared, Tessa. We're not thugs. We're just a gang. About as contradictory as meatless beef. The old boss was really violent. He would take a cheese grater to someone's leg if they looked at him funny. But after I took over, we went crystal clean. 
crystal. Methamphetamines. No! We don't do drugs! We don't deal with that stuff! We have to restructure the whole operation. Cut a lot of people off. Cut? Their throats. No! Not like that! Oh yeah, I haven't introduced this old man yet. I'm 24! Mama is lying. He is at least 48. Absolutely. Sorry for not introducing myself. My name is Moma Kumakura. I work for a prestigious advertising agency. You run the Kumakura gang, right? You're like a mob boss. How did you know that? Is he stupid? Moma may not look it, but he's a huge ASET fan. Well, I mean, I don't know if I'm a huge fan. Gambling. Bet, debt, ASAP! Worries. Uh, forget, fret, ASAP! Now what does she say? ASAP, you bet! Wow, my catchphrase! Thank you! <laughs> this, this is kind of embarrassing. But sorry, Moma. I don't like gangsters. <gasps> I don't like gangsters either. Gangsters are awful. All those nasty Yakuza guys should drop dead, am I right? <laughs> what happened to Mr. Obira? I heard he escaped the hospital. So did I, but I don't know anything more than that. Please tell me. saying about Tessa's dead body? Oh, well... Date saw a parallel world with my dead body in it! A parallel world? Never heard of it? Oh, yeah! Of course I have! Yeah, yeah, right! Parallel worlds and all that shit! Yeah! I don't understand it, but I suppose he does. Good, because I don't feel like explaining it. But why would Mr. Okira do that? I don't know. He could be a hostage or an accomplice. Mm. Either way, we need to find him. Hey, Iris, what do you think of when you see two lanterns pushed together? Huh? I mean, it kind of looks like something, right? Uh, not really. No, no, really. Picture two lanterns pushed together. There's something that reminds you of? Lanterns. What, you mean boobs? Damn it, Moma. You're not supposed to say it. this uh it's a fake Date, look a ufo that's an ashtray poor thing what you did to that tiger is awful oh that's fake Let's have a party! No thanks.
Odessa. If you're tired, you can sit on my desk. On your desk. They're out. Looking for Renju. Besides, I can't have them here seeing me like this. Good point. Why do you care? Can I have it? What? Can I have the ring? Why would I give it to you? Hey, can I have the ring? Absolutely, of course you can. Here, take it. Wait, 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 no. I, I can't give you this. You're so cheap. Come on, it's not like you're losing it. It's exactly like I'm losing it. <laughs> Aww. You guys are a good team. Like siblings. You said on the phone that you saw Renju. Yeah, I had all my people looking for him. So, tell me where he is. Mm, I could... Hey, I held up my end. I brought Iris like you asked. Date, come here. Date, I don't quite know how to ask this, but... Can you ask Tessa if I can shake her hand, please? Oh, that's it? Sure. Iris, could you do me a favor? A favor? He, uh, wants to see your boobs. What the fuck, dude? I didn't say that! Oh, sorry. What I meant was, he wants to shake your hand. Oh, a handshake? Sure! I would never show my boobs. Dante, this is the happiest day of my life. It feels good to be the boss. So how about it? All right, here it goes. Renju was seen in two places. First, Sunfish Pocket, the maid cafe. Second, Ikume Shrine. Sunfish Pocket and Ikume Shrine. Got it, thanks. No problem, bro, really. Anyway, Moma, take care of Iris for me. What? What? Wait! You're leaving me here? You'll be safe with him. <laughs> Are you serious? Look at his face! Not to mention he runs a crime syndicate. What if he sells me to the highest bidder? Tessa, I would never do that! I told you, we're clean now. We all go home on time, we follow government regulations. See ya. Wait! What about Shovel Forge? I told you I never promised to play with you. But you promised me a date! D Date! Is this true? You son of a bitch! I'm gonna ignore that. Good idea. Date, you're gonna look for Mr. Okiura, right? Take me with you. If you do, I'll tell you about last night. Her late night visitor. Fine. Yay! Date, don't ignore me! A clean gang? Oh, that's just a toy. Oh, just a toy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave them alone for a while. We have two places to check. Sunfish Pocket and Ikume Shrine. I want to go to the warehouse, too. Where you found my dead body. Something bothering you? No, I'm just curious. Oh, and one more thing. Can we eat somewhere? Food sounds good. I haven't eaten in a while. Oh, my chest hurts. I'm getting hard to breathe. <laughs> 